a good pin color here, not white. Uh, blue is fine. And uh, some of the things that I want to talk about is kind of what we talked about the other day in class. Okay, so one, one of the things that I tried to explain, and I don't know if I did a good job of it, but it's very important to understand, is that the modern nation state is kind of a social construct. Okay, a social construct. And what I mean by that is that people sort of made it up. Okay, so a map that we see here in the 1600s, late 1500s, early 1600s of Europe obviously is not the same as the map that we studied the other day that we went over in class. All right. And um, something else that I want you to know for the test that's going to be coming up in a couple of weeks is that um, what areas of Europe uh, became Protestant and which areas became Catholic and you can see it here. So here's the Catholic Church So if you want when you study this you know, Catholics with the Protestant minorities you can see this area here remained Catholic You know most of this all of this area here most of this okay, whereas in the north Obviously like I said the other day in class it was different Okay, and so you know obviously there's um Exceptions to that there always are so in this area of course you had a lot of mostly Catholics, but with some Catholic um, I'm sorry uh, with the uh, Protestant minorities, okay now <clears throat> Something that I want you to understand as well is that throughout the 1600s Let me just go to this this one throughout the 1600s uh, throughout Europe There were several countries, or sorry, several areas that consolidated themselves into kind of what we know of today as the modern nation state. Like France, for example. England, for example. Spain. Austria. Russia. Later on, Prussia which eventually becomes Germany. And in almost all of these cases, especially, well, we'll just keep the brackets right here. I should have gone maybe right here. In these cases, um, these countries in the 1600s, 1700s, 1800s, and in the case of Spain, really, the 1500s, you could say that they became empires. Some people say that you have, they went kind of through their empire stage. Now that's a question that I'm going to have for you in class. First of all, what is an empire? All right, is this uh, good? are bad and um, is the United States is the United States an empire is this good or bad all right so that's something that we're going to talk about now what we're going to talk about in this lecture uh, is what was going on in England because England develops what we call a limited monarchy. So what was going on in England in the 1600s? Well, first of all, what you got to realize is that England was in turmoil. And that's not, that, that's something, you know, that's easy to remember because it was in the 1600s that a lot of the uh, English colonists started going to North America. And you have to ask yourself, why were so many people leaving England to go to North America? They would traverse the Atlantic Ocean, which was very dangerous, and uh, try their luck, roll their dice in North America. Well, because England uh, was not a fun place to be. In the 1640s, for example, uh, there was a civil war. I mean, it was not pretty. I mean, you can imagine uh, it was kind of like to, you know, 
to some extent like Syria today, some of those places. Okay. In fact, you can even see some sort of some similarities between what was, what's going on in Southwestern Asia compared to um, what was going on in Europe at this time. So places kind of develop in different ways at different times. So one of the reasons that um, England was in turmoil is because you didn't have very strong leadership. Most of the monarchs at this time were a little bit uh, foo-foo, a little crazy, not very good leaders. Now, Elizabeth died, Queen Elizabeth died in 1603, and that ended the Tudor line. So, for example, Henry VIII was a Tudor, last name Tudor. And James I was James VI of Scotland. And so, he started the Stuart line of monarchs. Now, one of the things that James I did was um, really persecute uh, the religion of the Scots. He hated the Presbyterian religion. Now, the Presbyterians were Calvinist. So they believed very strongly in this doctrine of what? The priesthood of all believers. And this was kind of a recognition that if you choose your religious leaders... then you can choose your political leaders as well. So this was a recognition of that, this idea that it was not a big leap from religious democracy to political democracy. Now James um, was the king of England from 1603 to 1625 uh, and what we'll see throughout the 1600s is this sort of fight between the monarchies, the monarchy, and parliament in England, really for power. The monarchs wanted to be absolute monarchs. So, for example, in, in France, there was an absolute monarchy. But what we see in England... Uh, develop was a limited monarchy because they had to deal again with Parliament. Now the reason I'm saying this is because you can see some of the influences, a lot of the influences, a lot of uh, the way uh, England uh, developed politically had a huge influence on eventually the U.S. Constitution, U.S. government, and even today uh, we see oftentimes sort of fights for power between the U.S. president and the legislature or Congress. And this is this is not just President Obama. We could go back and uh, in, look at any president uh, for that matter. Okay, so we're going to end, end right there, and I'm going to put some more lectures up in a little bit.